Okay, today we're going to talk about a really special type of distribution of scores called a normal distribution. Okay, a normal distribution uh, is a very sort of special distribution in that while it occurs frequently in nature, Uh, not everything that occurs is a normal curve, but they do occur pretty frequently in nature. And they tend to occur when there are uh, outcomes uh, that are strongly influenced by chance. So when the outcomes are chance, these things tend to occur. Let's clear that off. So when you look at a normal distribution, you immediately notice that it's bell-shaped, right? So it's got this sort of arcing curve here. Hang on, I'm going to pick a different color pen. So, yeah. That doesn't work so well. That's a little better. It's got this sort of arcing curve, right? Um, and you'll notice that it's symmetrical, right? The left and right sides are going to be identical. So if you took it and you cut it out and you folded it right across this line right here, the mode, right, it would be symmetrical. There are Everybody remembers those things because those are the easy things to remember. There are a couple of other important things that you need to know about normal curves. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so the thing, one of the important things to know is that at this point here, this value, this point, right, whatever this number is, so if this is a frequency distribution, the frequencies go here, and these are scores that go along here, right, this point here, this number, so let's say that this goes from 0 to 10, ignore these other numbers for now, and this is the middle point, so let's say this is you know, 5, okay? So this number here, 5, is equal to the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean, the median, and the mode will all be the exact same value, okay? Uh, let's do this. Mean median ah. mean median and mode are all equal they're all the same number okay they're all located in the same place in the curve let's go back Okay, so the other thing, and the thing that's probably the most important about the mean, uh, or about the uh, normal curve, is that the distribution of scores is always the same. This number here, right, will always be between this point and this point, is always the same. And we'll talk about what these points mean in one second. Okay, and it always contains the same proportion of scores. 100% of the scores fall between the normal curve and this horizontal axis. 100% of all scores or outcomes are under, we call it under, the normal curve. That's why a normal curve exists. Okay, let's go back. Let's clear off those drawings. Okay. The other thing uh, that's important to know is what these points mean. So this plus one here just means that if this is the mean, well, this is the mean in a normal uh, curve. Right here, plus one, this means one standard deviation so it's actually the mean plus one standard deviation. So standard deviations are going to be sort of like our marks on a ruler. This number here 
that is the mean plus two standard deviations. So over here, is the mean plus three standard deviations, and so on. Okay. So every standard deviation is like a um, it's called a mark on a ruler. All right. And all of those things are true, but the most important thing to understand is that this, the division of the values, how that 100% that's under the curve gets divided up, is always the same. So between every mean and one standard deviation, mean and two standard deviations down, and so on, right? Mean and one standard deviation up, mean and two standard deviations up, and so on. Each of them contains a set proportion of the of the scores, okay, a set percentage of all of the scores. And if you add them all up, it would equal 100%. That's what this, these numbers down here are sort of indicating. Okay, so between the first standard deviation and the mean is 34%, so a little bit over a third of all the scores will fall here. This is about a third of all the scores over here. About a third of all the scores fall here. Over here is another 14%, which is like a sixth, I guess, right? And then over here is 2%. And you can see that the closer we get out to the tails, the fewer scores occur. And I'll give you an example to better sort of understand this in a minute. So fewer scores in tails and and this is the most important okay so star it asterisk it there's a set percentage of scores between each standard deviation Okay, so in other words, in between each point in the normal curve, uh, between each point in the normal curve, each standard deviation, there's a set percentage of scores, and that percentage, in this case, is 34% in that this portion of the curve, right? This is the mean, this is one standard deviation up, right? This will be true no matter what we're measuring, just so long as what we're measuring is normal. And this is what makes it a normal curve. All that other stuff can sometimes occur uh, in nature and things like that or in data sets, but this is what makes it normal. All right. So let's talk about an example because this is hard to understand without an example, I know. Let's talk about intelligence. Intelligence, we think, or at least by our intelligence tests normally, or typically, I should say, are, are normally distributed. Okay? So if this is the frequency of the scores, and down here are, let's say this is IQ scores, most people will fall somewhere around the mean. Okay? So this is sort of average intelligence. This is where most of us fall, right in here, okay? So that's about, what, 68% of all people on an IQ test, a normally distributed IQ test, which almost all of them are, will fall right around one standard deviation above or below the mean. Now, it's been a long time since I've used IQ tests. Um, it's not really sort of my field, but the mean here used to be 100. So you would score the IQ test, you give it to somebody, you add up their score, and they would have between 100 and 110, right? Or between 100 and 90, okay? And almost, you know, over 
what, almost 7 out of 10 people would fall in this sort of category right here. All right? Mo that's where most of us are. Some people, not too many, but not a small number either, would fall slightly farther up, okay? Or slightly farther down. In this case, right, you would be uh, about 95% of all people would fall in this category. That's what this number down here means. About 95% of all people are going to be here. So that's nearly everybody. Now, some people, when they take IQ tests, right, so that was actually between about 120 and 80, okay? So most uh, people would fall in, in this two standard deviations, above or below the mean. These are, these are typical people, okay? But some people, let me grab a new color, some people would score extremely high. So this is your, your Albert Einstein, this is your Stephen Hawking, right? This is your super duper genius. And they would score way up here. So this is 120, this is 130, this number here would be somewhere around 140, and they could score, or they would score, somewhere above 140. That would mean that they were smarter than basically Essentially, I mean, this number here contains, right, between this number, 130, and really almost all of them, uh, accounts for about 99% of all the scores. So these people, right, are very, very, very rare. They're very unusual. So the more unusual scores fall towards the top and bottom of the distribution farther away from where everybody else is. This is where most of us are, somewhere in here, right? But occasionally, somebody really special occurs and they're way up here. Of course, people do score way down here also. And they're also unusual, they're different, right? So while these people are essentially the super geniuses, these people down here uh, would probably be on maybe the autism spectrum or, or have had some sort of stroke or maybe some sort of brain damage or something like that. And they would score way down here. All right, let's clear this off. So this is really sort of important. You can know a lot if you have data that's normally distributed, okay? Let's review these things one more time. You have the mean, the median, and the mode, and all of those numbers are equal. So if the mean is 5, then the median is 5, and the mode is 5. 100% of all the scores fall under the normal curve, so things have to be between this, this line here, sorry, this line here, and this line here. Okay, that's sort of what the curve represents. Every standard deviation, right, works like a mark on the ruler. So, tick, 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 right? And each of these ticks is a standard deviation. One standard deviation up, one standard deviation down, two standard deviations up, two standard deviations down, and so on. There are not many scores in the tails. The tails are unusual scores, right? They're exceptionally high or exceptionally low, and there's generally something that's different about those people or something that's fluky about that information. Uh, with IQ tests, it's hard for it to be fluky. Normally, it means that there's something up with that particular individual. And... If we know where a person falls, if we know that there's a normal distribution, right, and we know where each of the standard deviations is, then we can tell what percentage of the population falls between any given points. And that is super useful. And you'll see why more when we talk about z-scores in a couple of minutes. All right, so welcome to the normal curve. I will see you in the next lecture.